happens. Some people are evening people or, or PMers, and some people fall in, fall in be, between. Uh, how do these different uh, chronotypes affect our sleep and performance? You know, like I know for me, I'm very much a PMer. Like I almost feel I get a kind of get a seconds, you know, energy at around three mm-hmm. o'clock, regardless of what happens, you know, you know, for the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. And after three, I could easily, you know, keep going, whatever I'm doing until 10, 11, 12 o'clock. But I know first thing in the morning up till around 11 or 12, you know, it, I kind of have to consciously make that effort just to just to keep, you know, things going at a certain pace. But should people try to find out if they're AMers or PMers and, and adjust their 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 performance during the day and and then their sleep um, accordingly. Um, should they try to find out what it is? I think everybody knows what it is. You know, there's a there's a term called in betweener. You know, and and that's simply because you camouflage it, override it, ignore it. You know, um, but I think you know anybody you know, sat on their own little island with complete control of absolutely everything. Shay is unlikely to start his day until 10 o'clock gone. So that's when he's going to have breakfast. That's when he's going to start to be active. Up until that point, he'd simply just still be lying under the tree, right? The am uh, is bouncing around the beach at five or six o'clock in the morning with the sunrise, you know. And But then, like you said, you get this second wind. So... If there's an AM or a PM on the island, the AM is up cooking breakfast, making me coffee, making you coffee, making you a drink, cooking your breakfast and everything else, and, and then you'll both start your day, in that sense, around mm-hmm. ten o'clock, and then you'll get to late afternoon, and you start looking after me because I'm going downhill towards that sort of thing, and you're coming alive, so. I think it's it's owls and larks. I'd heard it. My parents and grandparents would mention this. I wondered what it was. Like you say, I found out through a bit of research that it's, it's a little genetic twist, um, principally around the pineal gland and melatonin and serotonin production and light. Um, and so it's sort of like, well, how strange, because I wonder how many, what percentage of the population are nighttime chronotypes versus morning chronotypes. Uh, I couldn't really find the answer to that, to be honest. But over my years, whether it's a group of footballers or coaches, I, I would sort of, you know, put your hand up if you're one of these. I've done it in schools and with young kids and you know, and just go, this is what this is what a PMA looks like, and that's what an AM looks like. So if you think you're one of those, put your hand up. So there's no sort of you have to go through a scientific study. I think when you ever have any conversation very, very quickly, like you, going, I'm a nighttime person. So, Shay, what occupation do you do? Because as a nighttimer, you live in an AM's world. You don't live in a PM's world. And it's suddenly you go, well, surely there must be things in every 24 hours in my life, where I can at least prepare myself a little better because I'm going to be doing that at probably at a moment when I don't really would like to do that if me and my brain were in control.